Hello, Scorpio friends. I'm Annie Botticelli, and welcome to my Scorpio May 2024 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. I'm calling the theme of this month for Scorpio unprecedented luck and fortune, and we will talk all about that. Plus, there are so many other things to cover in this very exciting month. The first thing I'm excited about is that we have a robustly positive month from the perspective of the aspects. There are so many more sweet aspects compared to salty ones this month, and that's very exciting. Also, we're celebrating that we're at the tail end of the eclipse season. Eclipses tend to be very intense, although maybe hopefully not as intense as the eclipses you went through in the last couple of years since they were targeting you, but still March and April, you know, we're full of change unexpected things, big goodbyes, big hellos. And if you are feeling that and you want to understand more about it, just go to AnnieHelpsYou.com forward slash eclipses. And I will give you the details about where those eclipses were and where Scorpio would be experiencing that, you know, what fields of experience could be coming up for you because it's very relevant From the beginning of 2023 till the middle of 2025, we've got this storyline of eclipses that are at play, but we're not going to focus on those this month. Just to say that you still can be getting news coming in, changes can still be coming in, and what's very important about this month as it relates to the eclipses is that now that Mercury is direct and we're leaving the fog of the post-retrograde shadow transit, which completely ends on May 14th, you'll be in a much better position to make big decisions from the information that came in from the eclipses. We had this unusual combination of stars in April where we had a lot of Aries energy, which made people want to do things, but the retrograde was sort of throwing interference to that. But now we still have a ton of Aries stars and you actually have some open space to be able to let your wild horses run here. So let's talk about the many layers of the Aries placements, and then I'll make our way through my list of the top things for you to know as a Scorpio. We've got Mars, Hygieia, Transiting North Node, Mercury, Chiron, and Eris, all in Aries. Some of those are long-term transits. Some of those are just breezing by. But either way, it brings a lot of robust, uh, fiery, audacious, autonomous, motivated, inspired, active energy. Now, Mars rules Aries, and Mars is a co-ruler for Scorpio. So there is something to be said about some sort of correlation with this energy. There are some similarities between Aries energy and Scorpio energy because of this co-shared ruler. And it has everything to do with action. It has everything to do with uh, moving forward and blasting through obstacles. So this is a month where you actually can really, really do that. So as I said, if you have to make a big decision about something that's long lasting, the second half of the month may be a little bit easier to have clarity because you'll still have news come in. But there are so many nice aspects this month. Some An area of the month around the 21st, 22nd, 23rd is actually supremely great for starting new things. There are multiple things happening there. So if you're waiting to launch something, you need events, weddings, engagements, trips, um, decisions, you know, contracts. All month has some good spots. Towards the middle of the month, as it gets, you know, the second half of the month is more clear. And then these dates around the 21st, 22nd, 23rd are just glowing especially great. So for all of its, um, you know, sort of resonance, there are some things about Aries transits that are a little bit challenged for Scorpio because they make what's called a quincunx angle. That means they're five signs away and that can bring some awkwardness. Whenever there are a lot of fire transits and you're a water sign, this is the, I like to call it the, uh, the fire under your pot, right? So your watery pot. So it's a catalyst for all of your water to be bubbling, 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 bubbling from this fire. So if there's something you've been needing to do and you've been avoiding it, this could be a great time. If there's something you've been avoiding, this may make it so that you can't avoid it anymore. One of the big, big, big topics that are coming up specifically for Scorpio with all of these Aries transits is your health, your health, your wellness, your vitality, your daily schedule. 
By now, if you've been locked in a routine and you've been doing stuff you're supposed to be doing, you will be very bored, very restless, and you'll want a change of pace and a change of scenery. So, and this could actually be, be provided for you. So Aries energy is new. It instigates new things. And the sixth house is your daily routine. So expect some big shakeups there, you know, things that you've been doing, kind of going through the motions, things are now going to change very radically as far as your day-to-day -day schedule. And you can use this. If you're bored, you can add different things to your routine. If you don't have a lot of say in what you do every day, you can still take a different road to work, give yourself some different scenery, do something different on lunch, you know, anything you can do to shake things up now is going to be, or anything you can do will be conducive to this energy. And you may find that things out of your, you know, realm are happening that way. Now, this could cause some health topics to come up. I don't want to scare you because, you know, this isn't about fear. This is about awareness. So the sixth house, which rules health, has a lot, a lot, a lot of long-term and short-term activity here. And it isn't a very fiery, you know, sign that will make you notice things. So if you've been neglecting your health, you may have symptoms. If you have symptoms, it's your body talking to you and you will want to address those. Um, sometimes it could be a wake-up call for yourself or sometimes with this energy, I've often seen when someone has a full six house, sixth house like Scorpio does at this time, something happens to someone you know even if it's someone you don't know well, and it gives you a wake up call for something you should be doing. So like if you have some bad habits or you need to implement some good habits and you haven't because you've been kind of getting away with it and then something happens to someone and then you're like, oh gosh, I guess I really need to, to do something about that. So that kind of thing is going to be very strong. The more proactive you are, the less maybe you'll have to have, you know, be yelled at by the stars. This house also rules pets. And so if you're looking to get a new um, pet and have a forever, give it a forever home, then this month could be great for that, especially that, you know, as the month goes on because getting out of the retrograde energy. But if there's something that seems like it's perfect, you know, you've got to follow the flow. These things have their own story, but especially the second half of May, if you're purposely going out, but anytime during this month, you may find that you are befriending a new animal or some animals you have already may need attention. Again, it's really good to not ignore any signs, even if they're quiet at this time, because they could turn into a roar later with the whisper that starts out now. Okay, I want to talk about all of this grouping in Taurus, because this is especially relevant for you being your opposing sign. There are some major things happening here, and then we will layer in um, all of the starry stories about your unprecedented luck and good fortune. And actually, some of the pieces here that we're going to talk about for Taurus could be could be part of that layer. So we've got Venus, the sun, in a short term, Uranus for a long term, Jupiter imminently getting ready to get out of Taurus. So all of these are in Taurus. They're in your seventh house of relationships. So since last May, you've had an increased, or and even maybe before then, since early 2023, you've had an increased focus on your relationships. That could mean great things. That could have been difficult things, but relationships went into the forefront. And now that is going to deepen as Jupiter gets into the eighth house, which we'll talk about soon. But for now, Venus ruling love, beauty, money, self-esteem, the sun, which brings this giant spotlight and Uranus, which is continuing to bring surprises and jolts are all in the seventh house. And then of course, Mercury will breeze through there as well. Um, next month, Mars will get there. So you've got a succession of stories where you're deepening and dealing with things in your relationship space. There may be some people who are erratic and this may be, you may need to use some of this Aries energy to deal with those people because there, it looks like for many of you, there may be something you've been dealing with for too long. You've been shoving it down into the abyss and this Aries energy might make it erupt out. Now I'm not suggesting that you come out with anger, um, because I don't think that that will be the best way to solve things, but it has to come out. And this is, you know, kind of like a volcano brewing a bit where, you know, there are these stories of things going on in your relationship space that have been building and building and building, and you might be ready to blow your top. So if you can figure out a way to clear out your anger, like writing a letter that you don't send or doing something physically active to get your mind you know, in a straight space before you deal with these things, then taking the anger out of it might make it be more productive. But, you know, we have to remember that all this Taurus opposes 
Scorpio energy, which means it creates an opposition, which is pulling in two different directions. So for some time, you've had an extra storyline of me versus we, my stuff versus our stuff. The eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio solidified that, but now you still have Taurus, um, Uranus and Taurus doing it. And now in the short term, you have Venus and then Mercury and then the sun doing this. Okay. So basically the people in your life need things. You need things. You're in the process of discerning how you get what you need most out of everything and how you help people the most. And it really, really is a discernment process. The Jupiter in Taurus has been helping you to get very, very, very careful with your energy, not using it um, willy nilly and not spending as much time in the emotional abyss and sometimes paralyzed by the emotional abyss, um, which can, you know, can be a Scorpio tendency. Um, so Jupiter since last May into this May is helping you to use your energy more efficiently to do less or to do less, but, but have it go further. And you've got a little bit more this month where you're fine tuning that process. So there are some more layers we have to talk about here with Taurus. May 13th, May 18th, and May 29th, we've got the Sun and then Venus and then Mercury. As they make their way over to the same point that Uranus is at, they'll they'll make what's called a conjunction, which is the most powerful aspect in astrology. That will bring, the Sun will amplify, Venus will bring the topics of money and, you know, relationships, Mercury will bring news. So throughout the month, they're scattered these things that can come out of the blue. They can be for better or worse. Conjunctions aren't, you know, innately um, challenged or, or easy. They can go either way. So for instance, you can have sudden great news like, hey, you're having a baby and you wanted that. So yay. Or sudden other news like, oh gosh, you know, you, I don't know, have to owe a bunch of money or something like that. So these are things that, that can jostle you. But what can they, they can also do is they can bring amazing insights out of the blue, Uranus is like a lightning strike and it, it comes up with ideas that just come to you suddenly. You may have a really great idea now that you turn into an amazing business because Taurus does rule, you know, financial self-sufficiency, which is an ongoing theme that Scorpio has been really deeply working with. The theme is not going away anytime soon. So, you know, look out throughout the month for these jolts. They could be upsets, but they will pass quickly if they are. They could be sudden ideas. They will also pass quickly if they are. So if you have a good idea, don't assume that you'll remember. Write it down because the things that you think of now could serve you very well in the future, but they're very fleeting. Add to this story that on April 20th, Uranus and Jupiter got together. This is very rare. I've done a lot of videos on this. You can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com forward slash astrology. See my once in 84 year aspect to understand this better. I talked about it in the April horoscopes, which are also on that playlist. But the reason I'm mentioning it now is because even though it happens on April 20th, it's such a powerful rare transit that it echoes out for weeks before and after. So in May, we're still actually in this. So you've got big relationship, big, big, big relationship things going on now. Things that happen now, now this is something that can bring some of this fleeting energy really into the long term. So, you know, you're still in this. If you have to do something futuristic, something new, something innovative, something involving um, the internet, something having to do with uh, patents or technology, this could be a really great time to solidify something like that because you've got all of this energy and it has to do with relationships. So you in conjunction with someone, you working with someone, you and your partner, you and your business partner, you and a relative, you and a client, um, you know, that's another layer. So now my favorite part, let's get into all of the layers of the lucky energies. Now we've got two more. Okay, so let's go back to this. Two of the aspects that we're talking about, Venus and Mars, I mean, not Venus, I'm sorry, Venus and, yeah, Venus and the sun, when they cross over Uranus, that could bring some things that could be lucky and out of the blue. But once they get over to the same point that Jupiter is at, these are two of the luckiest aspects of the whole year, Okay. So put a gold star on May 18th, the days around there, May 23rd, the days around there. Remember how I was telling you, if you have to do important things, this is one of the reasons why I love the time around May 23rd, because Venus and um, Jupiter getting together, it just amplifies love, it amplifies self-esteem, it amplifies confidence, it amplifies money, and, you know, 
it's considered to be, these are very, very, very lucky transits. Okay. So you're having that go on and it could have something to do with your relationship space. So these are, these are the layers that we're building. Now, the next piece of long-term luck that has been going on for Scorpio is that Saturn major, major outer planet has been trining your placement. This has been since early 2023. So the people who are most getting targeted in a good way are middle degree placements. Okay. So Make sure you hear what I'm saying, because sometimes once I start talking about early, middle, or late, people think that they're completely boxed out, and that's not true. The fact that Saturn is going through water from 2023 to 2026 is lucky for all Scorpios at all times, okay? In the whole house uh, chart, this is just activating your place of hobbies and fun and pleasure and, you know, excitement and true love and, you know... um, children and creativity and all of this. So you you have a very long-term transit. Every single Scorpio placement does. Those of you in the middle degrees, especially say around 14 to 19 degrees this month, you're getting extra kisses and the closer you are to 16. So that's basically like November 4th through November 9th and the closer to around 6, 7, like in there, you all are getting some extra special luck from Saturn at this time. And that also means that the things I was talking about, about locking in something new for a new project, because remember, whenever you start a new project, it's a birth date for that project. So if you can anchor in, you know, Venus and um, Jupiter conjunct into your project, whoa, that's a good idea, right? And then if you've got Saturn doing its thing, that's amazing. Okay, so now we've been building up to my favorite and most exciting thing that is good for all Scorpios universally, and this is Jupiter going into Gemini. Now, while the angle that is made here is one that is a little bit awkward, okay, it still is not detracting from the fact that the eighth house, which is the Scorpio house, is the house of money and resources coming out of the blue, All right, this is, you know, Jupiter rules luck, Jupiter rules good fortune, Jupiter rules expansion and amplification, and it rules, you know, growth, and it tends to have an optimistic, positive tilt, a very broad reaching tilt. And now this is going into your house of other people's money. I cannot tell you how many times I have told people hey, you're going to be extra lucky with winning stuff for this next year. So from May of 2024 through June of 2025, you will have extra luck winning things. Okay, I'm going to give you just a couple of stories just to illustrate this energy so that you know what you're working with, okay? There was one time, this is my absolute favorite story. There was a woman that I met at um, a gathering of some sort. And she wanted me to do her chart at this point. I wasn't retired from readings and I did her chart and I was like, wow, you are, you have these things hitting off and you know, you're extra lucky, you know, definitely keep that in mind. She said, oh, well, I play the sweepstakes every year and I was thinking of not doing it because it's expensive and I've been doing it for 10 years. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is not the year to stop doing it. Like you really, really need to do that. You definitely need to do that. And then I was walking, taking a walk and I saw her on the street and she said, oh my gosh, Annie, I took your advice and I played the sweepstakes and I won like a million dollars or something, a lot. It was at least a million, I believe. So that's an example. Okay. And just recently, one of my friends, she had this going on in the eighth house. And I said, okay, you're extra lucky right now. Make sure you, you know, take advantage of that. So she just wrote me and she told me that she won a trip. She put in for a raffle and she won a trip and a gift certificate somewhere. And, and here it is. So this is what we're working with. So I'm not saying become a gambling addict. I am not saying take money you don't have and put it into things. I'm saying that the chance for expansion of, you know, unprecedented uh, good fortune and luck as it relates to investments is going to be happening for you for an extended period of time. And that's in the whole house chart. So that's very neat and clean from May of this year until June of um, 2025. From the Placidus chart, the later you are in the sign, the longer past June of next year, this will actually extend for you. Okay. So that's exciting. Now, 
everyone can get the goodies from this early, middle, and late degree. Okay, a couple more dates I want to give you. May 7th, new moon at 18 degrees of Taurus. We've already talked about how Taurus is very important in your chart because it opposes your sign. If you are between, say, 13 and 23 degrees, so around November 3rd through November 13th, the closer to around November 8th, you will get more of a direct connection from this new moon, but that is, it's still completely available for everyone to set intentions for financial growth and stability, for winning money, for, you know, and this is like inheritance, uh, this whole Jupiter thing I've been talking about is also has to do with inheritances and um, borrowing money, loans, debt, so clearing up debt, all of these things, or acquiring material things that you have to pay money for, like getting um, a loan or something like that. So if you need a loan for something, this Jupiter energy is really good. If you need benefits or anything like that. So you can wish for those things with this Taurus new moon. It's also a really great time to build a self-care regimen, which we were talking about how your health house is so accentuated. So the new moon, the days around the seventh, you know, if you need to intend in some more self-care, this would be a good time for that. And you can also plant seeds for long-term goals that matter deeply to you. The days around May 21st, we've got a full moon at three degrees of Sagittarius. Sagittarius rules, guess what? Your second house of money. So here we are again. Money, money, money. More luck and fortune. Fullness, completion, fruition coming in the days around the 21st. Remember I told you also 21st, 22nd, 23rd, big time. So this is a really, really good time for financial ventures for Scorpio. And um, so hopefully you will take good advantage of that. Give an extra bit of caution in the days around April 30th and May 1st and the days around May 17th because we'll have two bumps with Pluto. So some power struggles can come up then. They'll pass quickly, but you know there may be some tensions to push through. Since Pluto rules this eighth house that we've been talking about, it could have to do with you know the matters that we've been expanding upon. So I've given you some dates that are relevant this month. If you love more dates and want to know the aspects and how they may manifest, then definitely sign up for my free VIP community at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Just put your name and email address there. And then when you're in the, um, you'll get the welcome letter, then you click on the archives and you can put whatever month you're looking for and it will be there. Then you can access my secret star portal, which has all extra content plus early content plus my written horoscopes and so much more. And if you want to learn astrology with me, including my basics course or my Become a Professional Astrologer Mastery Certification course, you can up level there. You can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com forward slash eclipses to understand the eclipse rhythm that's at play. Even when we're not in eclipse season, you can see what storylines are happening for the years of each eclipse story. And for my easy access player, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com forward slash astrology and whatever is current, this is constantly updating. So my podcast playlist will be there. My video playlist will be there. And if there's any videos that ha need timestamp, it, it will be somewhere there. If you're on YouTube, make sure you click the bell because that will be how you get my notifications right into your inbox. If you're subscribed, but you didn't click the bell, then you might not be hearing from me. But if you click the bell, then you can. And you can always look in the notes underneath the podcast or the notes underneath the video by clicking the little more button underneath the video title and then clicking more again to reveal the notes. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.